Drake, I woke up singing to myself today and I was singing, baby, come back. And Jordan Travis did. Let's talk about it, everyone. Let's ride, folks. You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And welcome back, like Jordan Travis, to another edition of Locked On Seminoles. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Drake here. And today in the stream yard, I got Mr. David Wise. Davey, what's good, good looking? Drake, I could not be in a better mood this morning. Um, you, I think you mentioned to me last night that it's fun to not suck. And man, did you hit that nail on the head. And a large part of that fun started and ended successfully with number 13 who decided to clean it back up that was the smart decision let's talk about how smart it was why it was so smart and what that means for us let's do it folks in today's episode of locked on samples is brought to you by omaha steaks omaha steaks is a gift from the heart a gift that we remember with every unforgettable bite order with complete confidence today knowing you're ordering with the very best visit omahasteaks.com use promo code locked on l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n at checkout to get the extra thirty dollars off of your order, David. Yeah, five six one's very own Mr. Jordan Travis JT thirteen, the gamer himself, announced last night that he's coming back. Yeah, David, where do you ex- where do you want to first go off with this? Where do you what, what do you want to do with this right now? Because quite frankly, this is a very important decision, and it's also something that quite frankly could be a domino effect for other pieces to come back to. Right. I, so I think I want to start here. Um, I hope everyone doesn't underappreciate how big of a recruiting win this is because we're in a day and age now in the transfer portal era and in the NFL draft era where kids tend to leave as quickly as they can kind of smell like there's money for them. A a lot of kids do that, whether it's the best decision for them or not. And it's up to the coaching staff to try to or our kids to stay at your school now it's not just enough to get kids to your school now you got to lure them to stay at your school now too um and let's let's, let's use recruit because lure that's a uh i know know you've been listening to a lot of those murder podcasts come on you have to entice them to stay at your school yeah that okay but anywho um (laughs) yeah that this is a big win for mike gravel um this is the most important player um, on our roster that could have left. Yeah, Jordan Travis was directly responsible for us staring down a 10-win season and to get him to stay, to sell the vision of what another year could do for him of growth. Let's me know that Jordan Travis and his advisors trust the coaching uh, and their development of him. And boy, has Jordan, Jordan Travis developed over the last couple seasons progressively. Um, if he can take another leap, which I, I don't have much of a reason to believe he can't with how how he's grown under this staff and with these teammates over the last couple years the sky is the limit for this team and and we thought we didn't see this coming this year i just sure wonder what 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 the future holds for us next year with another year for jordan travis it's the best possible news could have gotten last night i mean it's it's great news primarily because he's someone that you're right, Dave. He was instrumental in this team becoming a nine-win team. He stayed fully healthy for the first time all season. Part of that's you know him not you know running as much, but also when he did run, he was able to want, do one thing that we wanted him to do a lot more, and that was protect himself during those runs, whether it be sliding a little bit earlier, going out of bounds. Like we understand, he wanted to get the extra two to three yards, but, but before last year, he would try to fight through and try to you know like tackle through people. But now you see him actually making those business decisions decisions see what i did there overall it's actually going to protect himself and probably help his team as well and this is something that we were worried about the state of the qb room if he did left and that's something that now that we can just is a moot point because uh there's the homies back qb1 is back yeah Q, qb1 is back there, there there's so much to talk about here um i think we need to talk about what what he meant for this team this year what what it means for our team next year um, but I, I really do want to impress on everybody how impressive this was 
for Norvell and and frankly for our fans, our fans that donate money to Rising Spear, for example, our fans that are boosters, all of you helped this happen. Um, and 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 even those that didn't contribute money, those that went to the games and made it in an, an atmosphere this year that makes it hard to not return to because it's just so incredible to be incredible to be the quarterback at Florida State. Um, hats off to you. Job well done. This is exactly the kind of thing we need to be able to do. This this is a this is a big money move. It's the, exactly the kind of move we need to be able to do to keep up with the big dogs. So I, I'm just I'm I'm really proud of our fans and I'm really proud of our coaches and just just our whole school for being able to pull off one of the the, the big recruiting. I don't want to say heists, but but one of the one of the big recruiting uh, windfalls. It was a height of of the last several years for this school, at least. Just yeah, I mean, I, think about it this way: What would any school have given to have Jordan Travis come in next year to transfer there? I mean, I, I got to imagine you would have like Texas A and M offered him like five million dollars a year with what they do over there. Um, but th- that wouldn't have made any sense. But the point is, every school would have wanted Jordan Travis on the roster, and he wanted to stay here. So, just an awesome feeling today. I mean, for one, he's not young. He's like, what, 24 years old? He's going to be 25 heading into next season. It is really difficult to com- to com- to um, uh, to um convince a kid that he is, who's going to be a 25-year-old heading into next season or 24-year-old heading into next season that, hey, you still have to go to class. You know how boring it is when you're at that age taking the, you're probably like some of the regular elective courses because that's probably all he has left overall. And then also you have to like basically try to convince him between having – um. What's the word I'm looking for here? Convincing him he's, he's actually able to do enough money basically instead of being an undrafted free agent, actually paying him the right amount at that point. So it's really difficult to do that. And the fact that Norvell, company, Rising Spear, overall in general, will do that, that's quite that's basically you're right, the biggest coup probably of the entire uh offseason for for the moment right now. That's right, Drake. And 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 I'm glad you mentioned the word coup because speaking of coup, I think you have a coup to tell our fans about. Please do so. I have a coup. This yes, is it's a about? good coup. Everyone loves a good coup. Tell them about a coup. I don't know. Well, folks, that's how we're talking about our friends over at Omaha Steaks, the title sponsor of our show. Is that the is that the coup you're talking about right that's now? Or is it- yeah, getting all those steaks for that price. That's a coup. That is what we're really good because, folks, the holidays are here. Achieving great gifting greatness when you get the gift of a perfectly aged, tender, and delicious Omaha Steaks. The steak experts at Omaha Steaks have put together special curated gift packages to help take the guesswork out of gifting and also to make you a holiday hero. Folks, go to omahasteaks.com and take advantage of 50% off site-wide plus use code locked on L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N at checkout to get an additional $30 off of your order. Omaha Steaks is a gift from the heart, a gift that will be remembered with every unforgettable bite. Order with complete confidence today knowing you're ordering the best because, folks, Minimum order may be required, but visit omahasteaks.com today. 50% off site wide. Use promo code locked on L O C K E D O N at checkout to get the extra dollars off your order because, folks, it's holiday season and let's get thick together with Omaha Steaks because they're delicious. Drake, this is a coup themed episode, apparently, because we're we're getting these great deals on steaks and we now have a coup down below us, I see. Would and I forgot, to use, I forgot to use the damn overlay, too, for Omaha Steaks. So it's going to be rough for the rest of the show on here. But so, hold on, give me one second to change the background. Yep. And then we, let me bring him in real quick. Max, what's going on? What's up, dudes? Guys, I got, like, literally, I have, I have like, 45 seconds. And then I have to go to my day job. I appreciate you let me hop in. I just want to celebrate with my friends. Because, folks, if you're subscribed to Locked On Seminoles, which you should be, hit the button now. You'll know that this podcast is friends first, people second podcasters third sure. um we do this show because we like celebrating moments with our friends and and guys i think it's a it's a really cool moment for the fan base jordan travis announced it coming back so while i had two minutes i wanted to zoom bomb you as the kids say and uh just come in and and celebrate what a cool moment this is for for the fan base you know uh the, the only thing i really wanted to add was um i said about jordan i, I think i think him coming back is a huge huge thing for us regardless of his performance next year and 
Uh, what I mean by that is, is I think he, he's a beacon of hope in the offseason, right? It's a huge question mark that isn't going to be there now of what would we do without Jordan? Because whether you love Jordan or whether you think, hey, he's an average college quarterback who has great moments, which I think is the wrong take, but people on TikTok say that, it's much better. Oh, I'm crushing TikTok. Um, no, 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 I'm saying people say that on TikTok. I know you're crushing TikTok. Yeah, of course, all the all the UGA fans and stuff that you know find me because of the location. But anyway, um, b- but again, it would be a massive question mark if we didn't know who our QB one is, and at least we know that our floor at the position, the most important position, is going to be pretty dang high. So I'm fired up about Jordan coming back, and I just wanted to share that moment with my boys. Yeah, we love you, buddy. Thanks, guys. Go get, back to, get back to work. Oh. Go back to work. Alrighty, I'll see. Coke at seven thirty in the morning. You couldn't Coke. Coke it's, a, it's a Code Red Mountain Dew. I bought. They had, a, they had a, <laughs> so they much. Had buy, they had buy two get one free at Publix. So I had okay, buy Kyle, get out of here. <laughs> Love you guys. Make sure you're all subscribed. See you. Love Bang. you, man. Bang. All right. Well, Drake, I think I think we need, we got to talk about what this means uh, for next year. Be- uh, this this means so many things, and I think you probably touched on oddly the most important thing of all so far, which is Jordan Travis changed how he played football this year. And I don't just mean like oh he was better at throwing or this or that. That's not what I mean. Or seeing the field better. No, Jordan Travis made a concerted effort to keep himself healthy, um, and and I believe without costing the team a whole lot, like. He ran the ball 75 times this year, whereas he ran the ball 134 times last year, 97 times the year before. So he dialed it back. But guess what? He had the same number of touchdowns, seven, running the ball this year as he did last year and the year before on a lot less carries. It felt like he still had his magic moments on the ground and through the air almost doubled his yardage total. He he this year had more passing yards than he did in his career prior to this year combined. So keeping himself healthy on the field, that was the results. That's what we have coming back next season. Drake, what are you looking most forward to? And what do you think the biggest impact is of Jordan Travis coming back next season? Um, so the biggest impact for me, probably from him, from a standpoint is just how this offense can take a probably another leap primarily because you're going to be having, if he stays committed, which I think he should, will be Hakeem Williams in this offense. Then you also add in another year of development for Micah Pittman and Johnny Wilson. Johnny Wilson, all he needs, to, I think, all Johnny Wilson needs to do is be a little more confident with his hands, and actually, he become very, basically, a very dynamic weapon for you. You also bring in Winston Wright, also probably into the fold next season. Now we don't know how he's going to be health wise, but this isn't the same thing as Mackenzie Milton, where you rush him back from injury. You basically, ha- he basically had almost what a one year, almost a two year kind of rehab period he's going to be having at the, at the point of next season. So that's yeah. going to be a boon for you too as well. And just seeing how we, I forgot who posted, I think it was Brandon Snow from 247 posted the uh, the trajectory track of Mike Norvell with quarterbacks, always in year three, they take a huge leap. Now we can see what, and what year four has actually with Jordan Travis under Mike Norvell. And that's something that quite frankly is super exciting for an offense that was what top 20, top 15, the country overall when it came to rushing and passing. So to me, I'm just excited to see how Jordan Travis is able to take me help, help this offense take another step forward. Also behind probably what should be another good offensive line with kids like Qua- uh, Bryson Estes coming in, Julian Armella, the kids that have been there in the system for a little bit while, getting bigger, understanding the playbook, giving him more protection. So to me, I'm just excited to see. We've seen Jordan take the next step on offensively. Now I'm excited to see how the offense as a whole takes another step heading in the top 10 territory. Same thing with Mike Nevo's play calling too. Right. The, I think the <laughs> what was the the UNC quote? The ceiling is the roof uh, for yeah, I, next year. A, Mike Jordan. <laughs> yeah, good quote. Um, but it don't it, it's really difficult to get a quarterback in particular to stay in college for six years um and to stay at one school for five of them and finish out his career there. That's just not how college football works these days for a kid that played at the caliber Jordan Travis did this year. So that's a lot of continuity in Mike Norvell's offense, like you said. Um, I think that makes it so much easier of a decision to come back for somebody like Johnny Wilson. Um, I think it makes it a lot easier. Of a, I think it makes it somewhat easier of a decision for somebody like Trey Benson too, whether or not he does come back. I mean, I think there's there's at least a stronger sell now. Um, I don't know that I would if I was him, but the point is, when when you have your arguably your best player on the team 
at the most important position on the team saying i i could maybe i could go make some money but i want to hear be here with my guys and try to run this back but let's get better than 10 wins that is that is such an encouraging and attractive uh advertisement to to potential transfers to recruits to other guys on the team and that's only going to make this team i think work harder and and, and it it's going to bring that i think continuity is probably underrated in college football because you don't see it very often but i'm fully expecting this offense to like you said push for top 10 next year which should in turn make the defense's life easier and it's just going to be it it's going to be a a good a greatest show on turf kind of situation at times next year. And I, I I just I really can't wait for it, man. I'm so excited for this. Like we could have been having a completely different conversation right now about whether Tate Rodemaker is capable of leading us to an eight win season or, you know, if AJ Duffy, maybe maybe he's ready in year two. But we're not having that conversation. It's going to be great for Duffy to learn under him. And instead, I think we're talking about next year. Can we win the ACC just because of this? I think next year we're talking about making the CFP. Yeah. Because frankly, mm-hmm. we saw that three game stretch. We weren't super healthy. Those were two games against Wake Forest and State that we dropped that we shouldn't have dropped. And talking about eleven and one team. Yeah. Wouldn't be the AC championship game, but we probably would have been probably in the top ten, maybe number five, number six around there. And also, if we're being honest, if we ran it back against Clemson right now, I don't think we would lose. I actually think that we probably would handle them not easily, but it would probably be a closer game and we'd win the game overall. So I think you're just at now with Jordan Travis coming back. It's a sign for things to come. It's a sign that we are fully expecting for other pieces to come back that are very important. And it's also we're expecting to make we're expecting to be a top fifteen preseason ranked team. So heading next season, we already have that kind of foot, kind of you know moving forward for us, and also most likely being in that CEP conversation as well as winning the AC because the AC remember next season is no longer by divisions; it's by best record. Oh, that's right. That gives us uh, that 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 gives us an even easier path, I think to reach the conference championship game, which should in, should in turn give us an easier shot at a playoff. That's where we're talking about this team right now. You're absolutely right. That That is the territory that this team, I'm not saying we should or will, but I'm saying we should absolutely be in that conversation next year as long as Jordan Travis is, is maintaining, if not improving. It, it, I think playing at the current level he played this year should be enough for that. And I want to talk more about Jordan Travis's play specifically. But before we do that, Drake, I have a good play for the audience that I need you to tell them about, please. Well, folks, Dave's talking about our friends over at Built Bar. Today's episode is also brought to you by Built Bar. Listen, folks, white chocolate peppermint granola. It's that time of year. It's the holidays. And white chocolate peppermint granola, it's built to take on the granola bar. So it's more filling and still insanely tasty. And candy cane brownie puffs. Built puffs are like biting into the universe's most delicious cloud. Dave has already told you about the birthday cake puff. It's like tasting like a delicious peep, and that's something I would, I would never say. But if you're not fans of those, there's 17 other flavors to choose from. As you know, Dave is the cookie dough connoisseur. Myself, I am the uh, cherry barcia Casanova. And Max, while he was here, he still kind of is also. He's the uh, the burger general of the peanut butter brownie brigade. Because Built.com is, folks, it's, it's where you want to get healthier. It's where you want to eat all the food. So get 15% off your order today by using promo code LOCKED15. L O C K E D O N one five. Sorry, locked on fifteen. L O C K E D O N one five. Uh, built dot com because it's built. And folks, you just gotta try it. All right, Dave. Yeah, we're on the home stretch now. Yeah, Jordan Travis talk for thirty minutes. Yep, take us home. Okay, Drake. Um, I think we gotta have a little talk about what what the next step looks like for Jordan Travis because I mentioned that if he maintains next year. I think that's a conference championship level team Mm -hmm. um, and a playoff contender uh, if if he maintains and stays healthy. But there there is there's been steady progress by Jordan each year he's been here. Um, And I guess I guess I'm trying to think of like, what does the next step look like for him in his progression? Because we talked about him needing to work on his kind of short and intermediate passes on keep uh, on not being so reckless with his body. I think he checked each of those boxes to at least some degree this year. He took care of much better care of himself. You saw that um, you saw that against Florida when 
he was just like an inch short of the goal line a couple of times because he avoided a big hit. Yeah. Um, so uh, that that's, you know, it's funny that that aggravated some fans. But to me, it, it was a manner of self-preservation that didn't end up costing the team, thankfully. Um, mm -hmm. And he managed to do that all year in a way that kept him healthy. And healthy is productivity because you're not playing if you're not healthy or you're not playing well if you're not healthy. So that was one thing he did great. He, he really progressed at this year. In addition to, I think, those short and intermediate passes that he struggled with last year. So I just want to tell me what you think the next step in the development of Jordan Travis looks like and what that next step would do in your mind for your expectations for the team next year. So that's really interesting because like the way he did, did like an astronomical leap when it came to passing, I don't think he can go. I mean, he can probably go further with that. I just don't think it's, I don't think he needs to, because also he didn't, wasn't asked to pass a lot. in a lot of those games still had like what 200 plus yards, 300 plus yards in some of those games where he threw the ball, maybe 15, maybe 20 times. I think maybe the next step is probably staying fully healthy, but also using his legs a lot more. What, what did he end up running, rushing this past year? He had like, what, 300 something plus 390, 367. 367. And then the year before he had what, like 750, 530, 530. Well, I was way off. So I think maybe next season he runs more. I really don't know because a lot the, what we saw this year from a fully healthy Jordan Travis was probably what we really need to see. Actually, you know what? I know what we need to see. I need to see when we play ranked opponents, we still see the same Jordan Travis. For the first half of NC State, right. he was he was probably one of the best halves of football he's ever played. Second half of NC State, because I know he was frustrated with the consistent drops. He threw those two picks. That's something I need to see probably over in and every single game for him to consistently be really, really good. And quite frankly, that's also like difficult for not only any college QB to do, but it'd be any NFL QB to do is that not, not to have that one bad game which is not being nitpicky, but the only thing I think you really ask of him is to be is super consistent. But that's something that, quite frankly, Jordan kind of showed you he's able to do after that bye week because also we were kind of limping towards that bye week after that three-game stretch of having a lot of players out, a lot of players injured. Jordan also did play a little bit banged up from being hurt from the, I think it was the Louisville game that was the one he got hurt, he got pulled. Yeah. So maybe just overall just stay consistent a little bit more, but quite frankly, I don't know how much more you can ask of the kick because what he did this past season was absolutely dynamic. Yeah, there, there, there are not enough accolades in my mind this year for what Jordan Travis was able to accomplish. Um, you know, when we had our preseason conversation about both realistic expectations for Jordan Travis and kind of our frustrated, why isn't this possible expectations? Like, for example, we were saying, why is it so crazy to think he could double his yardage total from last year passing? Um, like, like, why is that so crazy that we could think maybe he'll throw for over 200 yards a game? Um, mm. That that wasn't so crazy. Uh, he just needed to work on some things and make it happen uh, through the air on the field. And you saw when he when he's out there when he's when he takes the snap, he's he is intentionally and thoughtfully. A, surveying the field making his progressions and looking to pass and moving around for the purpose of keeping his eyes downfield and making a pass and that worked out uh he, he attempted 315 passes last year which was about the same total as 2020 and 2021 combined um but he had his highest yards per attempt in his career this last season um and 22 touchdowns to four interceptions the proof is in the pudding uh, those four interceptions, uh, for the most part, were costly um, in those ranked games. And that was frustrating. I agree with you. I think that is probably the right answer to that question of what's the next level of development for him. Um, because, I mean, you could, you could say it to, about any quarterback, be more consistent on the deep ball. You know, like, the, it, it's tough to throw a deep ball. That's that's every quarterback's dilemma. Jordan Travis, if you go over look over at PFF among the qualifying quarterbacks, he graded number 10 among all qualifying quarterbacks in college football this year. So making top 10 quarterback in college football. Are you kidding me? Um, it's, it's tough to find when you're talking about any top 10 quarterback, it's going to be tough to find areas to nitpick. Um, there's mm -hmm. always going to be room for development, but I think, I think continuing the chemistry with the receivers, because I think at times still there were some same page issues between the receivers and Jordan, especially the, the new receivers. Like you said, Johnny Wilson, for example, 
um, getting on the same page as Jordan Travis, that chemistry, developing that chemistry better is going to be important. And I think, I, I think I'm not smart enough at, at the quarterback position. I'm not a quarterback coach to know what the hell you nitpick at this point, because you're right. It's showing up in those big, big, big moments against our most difficult opponents. He did it against Florida. He did. I have to give him credit for that. Show up big in that game. But we need to see that consistently because if he wants to get drafted, he's going to have to show them those highlights of him in big games against big opponents on the big stage, making big time throws and staying poised and not making mistakes. If he can do that, this team's going to win 10 games again next year. We're going to compete for we're going to challenge for an ACC title and a playoff spot. And he's going to get himself drafted. It just makes me I'm not going to lie. It makes me sad that the expansion should have been taking place this next season. Because then actually probably be a little, path to be to path to being a part of the twelve will be a little bit easier, but I think you're right. It's really hard to nitpick at this point with Jordan now. Like we, we talked about the over the summer, where it was some of the mechanics that we, we wanted to see kind of fine tuned, and you can tell it was a lot lot better. Even in, even in those losses, there were some there were times where like you still see that him not diverting away from his mechanics. I think just quite frankly, something that when it comes to those bigger games against the ranked opponents. Uh, we actually do need to see him be consistent, but overall, like he showcased over the, the last stretch against teams that you should beat, he didn't just beat them; he absolutely annihilated them. Yeah. And then against Florida, you were right. Florida is a tough opponent. Florida, while they have a bad defense, they have a really good offense, and it was showcased actually on that Friday night. And he was absolutely nails and carried the team on his back, though. So to me, with Jordan Travis, he is the dynamic piece that this team needs to run because we would have had so many questions heading in next season, what this team could have been without JT. So him coming back and doing that, I don't know what else he needs to really work on. Maybe just the, 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 what we're saying before, the consistency might be the thing. Consistency is key, but also consistency is the most difficult thing to have in college football as a team as a whole. The only teams that are, are consistent and consistent are Alabama, Georgia, some now apparently Michigan and Ohio state, but even those teams have their slip ups, have their mess ups. So with Jordan, if right now, I think quite frankly, he I think it's more tasks for the offense around him to take the next step forward. Not just him. Yeah, that that's right. So just so everyone knows, like Jordan Jordan had a sixty three percent completion percentage this year. His receivers dropped seven percent of his passes. So I, I think to still play at the level he did with the level of inconsistency at the receiver position at times. Keep in mind. If you go look at PFF, they'll tell you we have a top 10 receiver unit in the country this year. And certainly it did look like that a lot of times. But there were also a lot of frustrating times where you would have our football team kind of doing that curious thing our basketball team does where they go like four minutes without scoring. And you're like, just, just do anything, do do anything right to get a point. And just doesn't happen. Um, so you saw times like that with the receivers this year, right? Alligator arms and. And Jordan Travis managed to do what he did in spite of some not so great pass blocking and in spite of a little bit of inconsistency in the receiver play. Um, I mean, he had a big time throw percentage this year of almost seven percent or excuse me, of six and a half percent. So six and a half percent of his throws were big time throws. That's if if you're attempting how many passes a game would he have attempted? Um mm -hmm. 12 so like almost 20 passes a game so three of those three big time throws a game at least that's that's big i think we have a lot more big time throws on the horizon i think we have a lot more sports center top 10 plays on the horizon with with jordan i think towards the end of the year kind of figuring out the balance between all right screw it i can run and I do. I should probably tame my running to keep my arm and my body healthy. I think striking that balance, he did a little bit towards the end of the year, better than prior in the year. And that coming back next year, that's a lot of command of a playbook and an offense. And I think, I think he's going to be doing a lot of work on that next step this off season and, and just, just honing in. And if that accuracy improves to the point where some of those throws that were just off this year, it, the margin really is that thin that I think that's the next step between Jordan Travis being truly one of the best quarterbacks in the country and and on draft boards and the difference between that and us being a good nine win team. 
And so if that's that next step, we have the world to look forward to. Can't imagine being in Miami spot, having no idea what the hell they have at quarterback, but glad we're not them. Always with the parting shots. And I mean, that's just right. Jordan Travis, he's coming back, folks. We hope you come back each and every single day and make Locked on Seminoles your first listen because, folks, we love having you here. We love talking about Florida State Seminoles sports, even though Dave did give the parting shot. Also, the basketball team, Dunk Shibbles and Dimes, will be back in some capacity when conference play does resume. But we also will relegate to probably the weekend and basically having it for 10 minutes or less because uh, the basketball team... It hurts me and Dave a lot because that's one of our first loves. But Dave, please let the folks know how much you love them and also what to do in the YouTube podcast instructions. Great. Just tell me to do my thing next time. Just just say do your thing. Everybody, Dave, I love Dave. you. But now Drake's already told you I love you. Now the moment's ruined. I hate when he does this. But for the podcast, find us on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, Google Play, or the YouTube. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications. And leave us some comments. What are you most looking forward to next year from Jordan Travis and this offense? What did we miss? What is what do we what did we miss about what Jordan Travis needs to develop going into next season? Please let us know. Because I mean, look, we're three weeks from the bowl game. We have a lot to talk about between. We, I mean, we don't have a lot to talk about to fill every day between now and then. But we're gonna have to do it, and we're gonna have a lot of Jordan Travis to talk about. So talk to us about it. My apologies for ruining the moment and possibly the entire evening. But, yes. folks, that was Dave. This is Drake. And we'll see you all next time on Locked on Seminoles. Take care, everybody. Go, go. Five, six, one, stand up.